Welcome back to The Art of Actual Change. I'm your host, Derek Nielsen, former health specialist turned wildlife, conservation, fine art photographer. Through my many travels around the world, I've met some people who are doing some fascinating work outside themselves to make this planet a better place to live. Each episode, I'll be bringing you these people, letting them tell their stories, and hopefully, you'll find inspiration in these stories so that you can go out and make an actual change in your world or the world around you. I'm so excited for today's episode. You guys are going to love this one. It's with Tracy Strandness from Barefoot Eco Outfitters. She and I have a, uh, a mutual and unfortunate connection, and I wanted to just let people know that we do talk about things on this on this episode that are a little bit deeper and more personal. Uh, they talk about trauma, abuse, things like domestic violence and sexual assault. Um, if these are triggers for you, I highly recommend maybe not watching this episode until you're ready for it. But if you are, dive in deep. Uh, this is where Tracy and I talk about things like therapy, um, how our evolution as people has been shaped by the different things and traumas of our life, but not all doom and gloom. These are some really powerful things we talk about and what has led us to our, our success and who made us who we are today. So please dive in, enjoy the episode. I am excited for everyone to watch. And if you, if you like this episode in particular, tell us why in the reviews, in the comments, uh, share it across any platform you can. Um, you know, we really appreciate all the feedback we get and enjoy the episode. This one's a really good one. Tracy is phenomenal. So thanks a lot, guys. Welcome back to the Art of Actual Change, everyone. I have an incredible guest today. I have Tracy Strandness of Barefoot Eco Outfitters. I discovered Tracy on Instagram. Uh, it was something that I was scrolling through um, I think we actually got introduced originally from a, a mutual friend of ours on, on Instagram. I think I had done a Sunday spotlight with her and maybe that's how we originally got connected. She was highlighting my work, but we've, we've kind of stayed in touch. And, and the other day I, I was just simply typing in on the search on Instagram, sustainable fashion and your brand popped up on, on my feed. And it was something that I am, I'm getting deeper involved with myself. And I thought, I wanted to reach out to her and talk to her about Barefoot Eco Outfitters. So Tracy, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, we're happy to have you. And I, I know that this is something that the is kind of catching on more and more. And, and, and maybe you see it because it's your company, but I see it in my own circles of people, people who I've talked about. I was just in Manhattan doing an art show with one of my other clients, and she's really involved with sustainable fashion. But there was a few other people that were mentioning this term sustainable fashion and eco fashion and things like that. So I thought it would be a great fit for what we're doing here. And so can you tell me a little bit about eco, the Barefoot Eco Outfitters? So, yeah. <clears throat> um, so, um that's like a, you know, where, where do you start thing? Um, sure. And we'll, we'll kind of get to the other parts. So sure. like eco fashion, it's kind of interesting to hear you, you talk about as somebody who's kind of coming into it and, you know, and um, your perspective that people are talking about it more, which is kind of like, oh, that's awesome. You know, because, you know, you, I, I do work in a vacuum in a sense, you know, and, and so, um, and kind of wondering, is the message getting out? But for, for me, it was all a part of um, our mission to honor nature for the healing and uh, respite and refuge that it brought to us um, from our life circumstances. And, um, and so uh, basically it was, um, my business was, a, you know, wanted to start a social enterprise with the focus being the mission, you know, which is to you know, environmental conservation and, um, and the vehicle, um, I, I just felt like this would be a good vehicle. It's something where, you know, um, you know, um, I feel like life's best moments are lived in a t-shirt, to be honest, and <laughs> just, like, yeah. you're most relaxed. And you're yeah, just happy, absolutely. You know? So, and I just think, and I felt like, if, you know, getting, a, um, if I could uh, relate to people um, emotionally with our, like, designs that kind of um, spurred happy memories of, you know, going to camp as a kid or camping with your family or and you're just some kind of outdoor experience that you kind of, oh, that, you know, makes you feel happy and then and um, connect people with nature, you know, through that uh, absolutely had to be that the products were earth friendly, right? I mean, this is the thing that kind of um, 
you know, you butt up against sometimes people who have an earth friendly message on their shirt, but those shirts really are not earth friendly. And it's totally the most polluting industry, the clothing industry. It's so it's so it's kind of like, you know, um, approaching it cautiously that, you know, I, I don't want to be part of the problem. I, I want it. But I felt like it's an opportunity to educate people, to let people know you can make clothes out of them. You know what? They feel way better. It's you don't have to worry about, you know, um, poisoning the workers you don't have to worry about you know um you know all the environmental issues and, and things like that you know there's ways to um you know mitigate and create really you know um wonderful fashion with a whole lot of different um materials so so it was kind of as the educational point of view um and then you know dovetailing into the conservation so i just kind of felt like um you know that's what the route we wanted to go and then just doing all the research about it um was kind of like it's immense and there's so much to know and um we just kind of fell in love with the idea of getting the word out about that and, and um, surprising people and yeah. kind of letting them know their options. Yeah. yeah. When did this idea come about? How, how long ago? So um, uh, actually originally, um, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, originally, when we first came out of the time that we'll talk about, sure, <laughs> we'll yeah, talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, so um, I want, at that time, I was kind of really focused on um, like health and wellness and being, you know, active and taking care of yourself because that also helped kind of save my life, honestly, during the time we were going. And so my first like foray into this was an eco-friendly with more of a like a, a, a sports focus, you know, um, so it's kind of how I started out. But it, I, I've been an athlete my whole life, but as I've, you know, kind of morphed and everything, it wasn't like that wasn't like my passion. It's not my passion and being active is, but not like you know, competition and right. things like that. Just like, this just doesn't resonate with me anymore. And so um, my daughter and I were on Mount Rainier uh, hiking and it was this glorious day, bluebird sky, crystalline air. Everything was just like so wow. perfect. And I, we were just like, that's kind of our special go-to place. It's not that far from here. And yeah. and so we were just like, what am I, why am I not doing, this is where I spend all my time. Like this needs to be our actual focus for the clothing it was always about the eco-friendly clothing. It was always about giving back to, you know, to conservation, but it, it didn't, I didn't line it up somehow. That's how the entrepreneurial journey goes though. Right. I mean, you, totally. you started out and then you kind of like, and those like, everything just kind of went, yeah. you know? And so that, that was kind of the moment where like, uh, this is our, this is our happy place. This is what we do. This is what we live and breathe. So then we just focused it into being, you know, um, you know, outdoors themed and kind of promoting that because that was honestly where we spent our time. It, so, Yeah. Yeah, that's how it happens. I mean, for, for like, just like my own journey in this, in my photography field was I picked up a camera out of boredom and it was fun. And then I tinkered with it and then I fell in love with travel. And then I was like, I brought a camera along and I started taking pretty pictures. But then the more <laughs> I saw things, like I couldn't turn my back to what I was seeing and environmental issues and human rights things. And I started photographing those things. And I was like, wow, this, some of the stuff's like really, really beautiful. And it morphed into something that I'd never ever predicted would become my life or my my life calling, as as you know, a lot of people say, like oftentimes they say your life calling finds you. Yeah. You know, and you don't even realize when it's coming, but when it hits, you you just it's like that moment on the top of the mountain, you're like, this is it. Yeah, that's so cool. Your story that way. I I love that. It just that it found you. And you know, yeah, that that's that's kind of really, I think, how it happened for us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you were saying you, you and your family had gone through some pretty tough times prior to leading up to um, the idea of, of starting this company. And would you mind sharing with us what some of those, those memories and moments were and some of the, the tough times that you, you guys experienced to, to lead you into this point? Yeah. Um, and uh, um, so uh yeah. So sorry. It's, I, no, I no, no. It's good. Yeah. Because it's big. It's big, but it's everything. And at the beginning, you know, first when I started, I thought, you know, I'm going to start this company, and I'm not going to. I feel like I can leave that behind, right? I'm like going to move forward. And then like everything, all roads kept leading back to to it. And I was like, wait, no, that's our power. That's yeah. our strength. You know. Yeah. So 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 yeah. So we're domestic violence survivors. I have three kids, and and the there's a lot of, you know, my brain wants to go in a lot of different directions here. Number one's kind of sure. talking about, you know, that, that, that issue in itself. And, um, cause there's a lot of, um, stigma about that too, but, but, um, yeah. the, the, when I divorced, I mean, the marriage was obviously not, it was pretty awful. Right. Yeah. So, but when I divorced, 
was actually when everything got even worse. Um, okay. I was just not in common in, um, but I had to fight for the safety of my kids um, when the courts wanted to mandate visitation with our abuser and uh, that was like not okay with me, <laughs> but it was a, it's a, kind of, a, there's some not so great things that happened within that system. And so it was a battle of a lifetime. And that was, um, I just felt, you know, I'm going to fight to the death for my kids. And so everything went on hold. I homeschooled them because they were traumatized by this whole, you know, process of, you know, it was just the worst possible things as a mother that you can ever, when I mean, you can't protect your kids, you feel like, you know, um, so that was, I, I, you know, <laughs> It will be the worst thing that I ever go through in my life. Um, but it was like, I'm determined to, you know, beat this system. I'm going to do whatever it takes. So during that time, the only thing and the only freedom we had was, you know, I would um, living in Washington state, we're very, you know, outdoors are very accessible. Totally. You know, we had the Olympic national park that was close to us where we were living then, you know, um, and the, the ocean beaches and everything. So I take the kids camping and hiking, we'd get in the van and we just like go. And I was so brave. And I look back, <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, little, my little babies and, and we would just, and we would just like, my kids would just like, you know, run on the beach and, and they would lean into the wind and they, would, you know, we could just like yell and scream and be just safe. And that's the only place we felt free and like wow. everything was going to be okay. We felt protected. We felt nurtured and cared for, and it was our sanity. And so after this very life-changing time, and it took years to go get through this, um, it was kind of like, you know, we're just immensely changed. So coming out of that, um, <clears throat> then there, there's a time of, um, kind of flying under the radar after it stopped and kind of just licking our wounds and, you know, seeing how we're moving forward. And, um, and, and I lost basically my life set down to this very small, um, kind of place where I, you know, people like contacts and, and people, I just didn't have, it was yeah. like starting over like a baby. It yeah, was, the, the mutual so, life was gone. Yes. Yeah. It was just basically, it took everything we had. And, um, and so then, I thought, but I, but so what am I going to do now? And I, and it was like, I'm was so, I've always been super empathetic, super unconnected, you know, to nature and things like, but I didn't, every, everything just kind of, I, there's nothing else I could do, but do this. This is, I have to give back. I have to, I'm so grateful for what nature offered us. And I had to do something to honor that. I just wanted to honor and protect that because we're all so connected to it. It is our healing, you know, right. it is our, so, um, that's what I wanted to promote. And that's what I feel like I needed to do. So that's kind of where, how, how that all kind of went. And that's what defined the journey. And along the way, and as we have our conversation, you know, um, things will kind of, you know, lead back there, but, sure. but my healing process and how I experienced the world, you know, as an extremely empathetic person who feels everything and feels nature, I don't just like see it. It's, and so you know, how does that, that has influenced kind of everything that we've done along the way. Um, and, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, I know. I totally get that. I I'm, I'm very much the same way. And with my own healing process from when, from my attack a few years ago, I've, it's taught me a lot about myself and it's taught me a lot about how to treat people and how to value my relationships. Um, the ones that aren't, good. I release them and I, I, I hold no weight to them anymore. And the ones that are important, I, I cherish them even more so. Uh, and I, I also get what you mean about nature and how you feel it. Like you, you it's, it's a strange connection that I cannot describe to people. And it's, um, I was listening this morning to a podcast. It was something, one, someone who had interviewed me and I was listening to my own voice and the things I was saying. And it was like, it gave me goosebumps as I was describing it, but that's how I feel. Um, it, it was talking about being out in nature. And I think I was describing a, a, a sunrise in, in Yellowstone National Park and the crisp, cool air and how hyper aware I was of every sound, blade of grass, the wind direction, yes, every okay. little thing. Yeah. And it was it was like a spiritual, emotional place yes. yeah, where, yeah, where it's like, yeah. oh, and, and I... I think you know, 
there in particular in other places where there's a potential that you could be eaten like there's there's like <laughs> yeah. a, you're like you're hyper aware of you know you're hyper aware of like your surroundings then but like yeah. it's just even deeper than that I feel that in a walk in the park in Chicago or particularly like when I went to the Gifford National Forest out by you guys and I, the, just the smells the the, the 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 senses not just visual but the audio the touch the smell everything yeah um I can, I can just dial that deep into my soul. And yeah. it sounds like yeah. you're someone who has used that to help, especially as, as a sanctuary, a place where you can heal from, from the traumas that you've had. And it's, it's been in, instrumental for me. I don't know what I would have done without it. If I could, you don't have, have a choice really, do you, you don't have no. a choice, but because it's like, yeah, I, I was thinking about you that way because I kind of had that sense about you. And I, um, but I was wondering, you know, for the, when you're doing what you do, like you see things that are like hard to see, you, yeah. you who have to have, you know, yeah. there's have to be things that are tough to, and like, I was thinking about that, you know, if that was me, like, gosh, how could I absorb that? And, you know, you seem like a real positive and really, you know, um, person who's like always, you know, looking for change and looking for the good. Like, I, I'm just like wondering, um, to be the interviewer for a second here, um, yeah, yeah, know, yeah. How, 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 how do you navigate that emotional component of what you do when it's not easy, you know, when it's not like beautiful, maybe in it's, maybe in it's, maybe in it's rawness or roughness, there's some beauty to, but you know what I'm saying, right? Like, yeah, no, of course. I mean, yeah. it's it particularly like now that I'm removed from my own trauma and that, that whole thing is, is long in my past. Like I, I, I still see a therapist continuously to work on things. I think it's just very healthy to do it. Yeah. Most people should see someone to talk to that isn't family. That's a trained professional that can help yeah. you navigate your own mind, whether you've been through something like you or I have, it's just, you know, to, to learn how to deal with a friend, a, a lost loved one, a parent that may have died it could be anything like your dog got hit like that's mm -hmm. a traumatic event like yeah and it doesn't even have to be trauma you could just have someone because it's nice to talk to someone who's objective and doesn't you know know your your past and just wants to guide you so there is I still use that as a great tool to help me just kind of come not even compartmentalize because I like to weave it all together but um it's just nice to have guidance uh, from someone like that and, and to help me heal continuously. Cause it, it's yeah. even now removed three years ish. I don't remember anymore. Um, <laughs> it's little things pop up every now and again, but it doesn't yeah. bother me like it used to, like I used to really get emotional. I would lock down. I would do all the defensive things that you know yeah. victims do and, and um, I isolate and push people away. And now I like I can have a conversation with you. I can talk about it openly and be proud of who I am and, and that yeah. nobody can take that away from me, right? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. I, and, I love that, I love that. Yeah, and I mean, and so when I'm seeing things out in nature that are hard to see, like, disappearing landscapes or just trash that people leave behind in national parks or graffiti or um, in Africa or Southeast Asia, really not so great human rights things. Yeah. Um, I haven't quite, I mean, visibly notified, like seeing that it's slavery, but I see things that are essentially like slave labor in something like the fashion industry, right? Yeah, or like yeah, these really yeah. tough places. Um, yeah. It When I come back, and even I experienced it this July when I came back from Africa, I was there for three weeks. I felt like I needed to remove myself from the United States uh, American society for like a little bit of time. Like I felt like there needed to be a buffer because like yeah. I had, I, I took this really powerful photograph and I haven't posted it online yet because it's just, it's too, it doesn't belong online. It, it belongs in a museum. Fine. People can look at it, but it's, it's a photograph of like a two-year-old child um, smoking a cigarette. Mm. And it's so intense and her eyes are just strained and she's just like um, very wow. stressed out. And I'd be glad to send it to you, but it, yeah, wow. um, it's something that like when I came home and I heard like people complaining about things that were so trivial or like, yes, you know what I mean? It, yeah, it, yeah, I wanted yeah. to just like scream at him and be yeah, like, yes, what is, yes. you have no clue what you have. And like, it, and that wasn't right either because like they're dealing with their own things and, and to them it's important. And, I had to like really take a step back without like blowing up my relationships and friendships with people and being like, deep breath. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. This is their reality and you need to like 
take a time out and get into their reality for a moment and like acknowledge that their problems are are causing them an equal amount of stress even though like the stress isn't equal like in my yeah. eyes like a smoking two-year-old is worse than like a two-year-old who won't listen to you yeah like yeah that two-year-old has a different problem I think the more you know the more you the more work you do right on yourself and and the more you kind of you know examine you know like your journey and everything like that you know it does get harder it gets harder to relate it gets harder to relate but but that's the thing like um and even like in in with eco-friendly fashion or stuff like that I'm just kind of like but but you know people they they I want people that they don't seem like they like how do you not know how do you not you know think about this or whatever you know things like but it, I have to always remind myself, you know, everybody is on their own journey and everybody comes to their, their aha moments, you know, in, in their own time. And, you know, so it's hard to not want to just like to, to jump in and, and, you know, say, but it's way worse here, or it's this or that, you know, you, it, it, that can get overwhelming that, that, that emotion. I mean, it kind of like what you're saying, we had to step away, you know, because you just kind of can't, your life perspective doesn't really make sense in your surroundings anymore yeah. so sometimes you have to do that but um I, I think it's always kind of I always want to try to grow and and learn and get better and you know find you know where am I falling short and um I know heal my trauma you know that's an ongoing thing you know but uh it does put you at odds you know sometimes you know with the your surroundings and the things that are happening and so I think that's that's awesome the way you're handling that and I think it's just something that lifelong you have to do right like totally and and just be be you know have you know grant people the grace for their journey and you know unless it's a harmful journey for someone else right that, uh, but yeah uh it, it's a balance <laughs> yeah know? it is and i think people in our industry and I, I'm, I would say the industry of saving the planet right people who are yeah. like passionate about like doing things for the betterment of this this planet uh, in one way or another have like a constant struggle with like educating people on what's happening and not yeah. seeming like the righteous person who's just yes. streaming like at them like this is the way to do it all the time yes. it, that's important yeah because you can really turn people off with that right yes. it's like if you're saying absolutely well how dare you buy a pair of nikes don't you know where they came from and it's like well yeah they're you know what are you talking about i just bought them because i liked them they may not either know or yeah. they may not be in the position to like buy new shoes to change that you know because and we're gonna dive into this in a little bit because i i um, one of the things that I find uh, with eco-friendly brands is they're more expensive and it's, yep. it's not open to the masses yet. Um, so when I kind of get on my high horse to someone about like, don't you know what the sustainable fashion or like the throwaway fashion industry does? I'm like, well, first of all, you just learned about it. So don't think like yeah. <laughs> you're the most mighty. And then second, yeah. of, <laughs> yeah, like, second of all, like, um, you know, I always like to have conversations with people based on fact or, or at least try it. And, and if I can't, then I, then I don't particularly take a strong argument. I'll just like, let's talk about it. Let's have a conversation and maybe we can educate yeah. ourselves or, and I think, um, a lot of work for me has come up with the therapy and learning how to have conversations with people that are not easy. Like, yeah. you know, that has really helped me with, carry over into things like talking to friends about politics this yep. you know the last six years we'll say and yeah. how how polarizing that can be yep but still keep a friendship like right like I can I'm like I know you I went to high school with you I I, I know everything about you how did that happen yes, I know, know? Like, I know. Like, like, I, like wait a minute like <laughs> Who are you now? And, right, and what, right, what happened right. to the person that I grew up with? That, yes. You know, but yeah, it, but yeah. I still love them. And it's just yes, like, I know. it's these um, the therapies really helped like deal with people that I may not see eye to eye with. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear, I think there's a lot of people are probably, if they're listening, going, yeah, I know. Right. Like, right. You know, it's, as we approach the holidays. <laughs> yeah. As we approach holidays. Yes, for sure. And we had, everybody kind of had a rude awakening about that. What a weird thing to have happen that where you actually re-examine relationships you've had forever. It's kind of, it's weird, you know, but it's always, it's, it's a good skill to have. And it's, and kind of like what you were saying, you know, and you're, like you just kind of are, you know, um, more recently thinking about the, the eco-friendly um, fashion and stuff like that. Like I've been like, you know, kind of in this headspace and researching and doing all this stuff you know not, not for like this has been like probably see for like about eight years um but but so I can think of so I I'm used to thinking this way and I can forget that 
Uh, but I, but that is the reminder, kind of like I said, what, like I didn't know at one point I didn't know. And yeah. I'm still like, things are changing all the time. There's, totally. there's still things, you know, that I, that I don't know and that are going to change. And you, know, you try to stay on top of it, but everybody has a time when they don't know something. So right. you have to, and a lot of this information, unless you're traveling in those circles, if you're, you know, um, connected with those people in social media and stuff like that, and where you're being fed that information, if you're not like, you just don't see it, you just don't know. So, so just, you know, being like graceful about that education process is, you know, <laughs> the right way to do, because people, um, and when they do not, they, they want to try. Yeah. I, I found, you know, they're generally like, oh, I didn't know that's, you know, what can I do? So yeah, just being graceful through um, the disseminating of information and yeah, I think is important. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, so back to your your process and like with the company, where did where did you start to source your materials and ideas? Like where because like people maybe are starting to hear about like things like organic cotton or reusable uh, fibers or recycled polyesters or things. Where did you be able to start finding the resources to create this type of brand and can you can you describe your product to us a little bit yeah well so my thing um because i kind of always come from a place of it's kind of a weird way to say it but like um a champion of the underdog and the the thing like the person i i think i probably always felt a little bit like an outsider i just felt like even before everything happened like i was different I always felt different like I like I experienced the world differently like because of my empathy and because of things like that you know it was always kind of so um I always so what I wanted to do because the especially in that like for eco-friendly fashion and that like outdoors themed you know that world is very it feels very inaccessible to a lot of people it's like you have to be an extreme hiker backpacker or you have to be like some you know someone who's you know, well-versed in the outdoors and you, you know, go for, you know, you know, three-day treks and stuff like that. But, but for me, you know, I wanted to make it nature accessible and to create that love affair with just, you know, being outside. If you're in the city you have, and you have a park, if you have, you know, green spaces, you know, where I always say where the gray turns to green, you know, that's where you should go. And, and you don't have, you can go for a day. You can drive up to, you know, drive it to the mountains. And, and if you're like, and for some reason, it's not accessible for you to hike or to drive, just drive there with your windows down, sit there, go someplace and sit, just be there. You know, all of that is valid. Okay. That's yeah. all a nature experience and nature can speak to you that way. So I want to just have, make an accessible brand where people could feel like it could be just, you know, we went on those ski vacations when I was growing up or we went, you know, where you just have those, uh, those happy memories of maybe sitting by the fire doing this or that cold of the snow or that feeling of the ocean breeze. Do you know, everybody can have those accessible feelings and I want to celebrate that. So I'm not like, a big name, um, you know, I can't compete with, you know, the, the, the REIs and the Eddie Bowers and the, you know, the big outdoors brands, like, and I don't want to, you know, environmentally speaking too, like I didn't have the means, number one, I literally started our company on, you know, um, paper clips and string yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just kind of with determination and like, I'm going to figure something out step by step. So I don't have the resources to like create my own fabrics to do all this kind of stuff. But I felt like that would be overkill and it would not you know like end well because I didn't have the resources and there other companies already own that market so what I what I did because I wanted this to be a vehicle and I wanted to get the message across I looked and even like eight years ago um and moving forward like it was really hard to find like um products that were like eco-friendly um and so that then I found a company and I, and I my big thing is um there's different ways you can focus on being eco-friendly. And for me, mine was like um, carbon footprint. Um, yeah. So I didn't want to, people can be, have the eco-friendly business and they, they import, you know, things. Uh, and like, I didn't want to have add all that. I wanted to keep my footprint small. So I want to keep it domestic. And there, I found a company in New York. And so they have, um, and they had products that were, you know, they're really great, like, you know, for t-shirts and joggers and hoodies and, and, um, things like that, that were, um, just super great quality. Cause that's really important to me. Like I want everything to be, um, really well-made and uh, they're so soft and comfortable. <laughs> and it was, um, and then my messages, like the designs that we do, um, I, those are just things that, um, kind of come from the heart, like things that I, you know, um, I thought yeah, some of your messaging resonate. was yeah. really beautiful. I saw in some of your products. Like, oh, that's just, so nice. That's nice. Well, really, I mean, it's like <laughs> the way you describe, uh, like there was a couple like 
I saw one in particular, it was a mountain peak and it was a sweater or sweatshirt and like just your messaging on it was like, yeah, that's exactly what the mountains are about. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad that, I'm so glad that comes across. Cause it's, it's like, um, like, I guess like, you know, writing a song, it's like doing anything, like it's a very vulnerable thing to, you know, I'm not, I've always been really creative and kind of artistic person, but I'm not like a graphic designer. I'm not, I, I knew, I know what I want and I know what I like. And then I will always figure out a way to do it. So yeah. I just kind of like, and I just kind of did it from my heart. So I, I always want to lead with that. And that's how I want to connect with people. And I want to kind of create pictures in their mind. So that's kind of how the designs come about. And we like labor over, they seem simple maybe, but just every little detail, we just really labor over just to, it has to feel just right. So, you know, it seems, it might be like, seems simple, like from the outside, but it's all very much a part of our experience, part of our life and um, what we hope to have people feel when they wear our products and they see our products. And, and um, that's kind of, I want that to be the basis of our company and also that our customer service is outstanding so that we create connections. Because if you have, it sounds like you're an empath, like you're an empathetic person at heart. So when you're like that, you have, you, you, you want to connect with people. That's kind of yeah, just, you know, casual talking with people is hard because you feel yeah. like you have this, you're, you know, you want to connect with people. Um, yeah. And I'm an introvert. So, I mean, I don't mean that in a way, like I need a lot of people, but the you ones know, you, you want have. To, you yeah. want to make it, you want to feel like there's a connection. So with our business, like we really, um, we communicate a lot. We so reach out, ask questions. How can we help? We've developed so many friendships like around the world um, just by taking the time to um, connect with them emotionally about what the product is and what their memories are and all that. So that's kind of the whole package. <clears throat> but um, to just go back, so to sourcing out of, you know, New York, we get, you know, apparel blanks and, um, and then we, uh, then we do all the design and embellishment, you know, right here. And then, and so, and that's kind of how I keep things like small and local um, as I can. Gotcha. Yeah. Is, is there a certifying body that can, that is out there that in the fashion industry, that's saying like, this is guaranteed to be what you're saying it is. Yeah. There, there is like, there is um, like for organic con, for example. Yes. You, yeah. you, there are, there are. And, and so um and we 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 write that on our on our website too that it's certified that it's important if you if you see like apparel and it just says cotton and people will just think oh cotton that's a natural fiber that's you know um, and so but if it just says cotton it's conventionally grown cotton you know so unless it's organic cotton and then there um, so you always have to you know and there's greenwashing out there you just never, but yeah there's like got certified cotton and so yes there are there are ways that that is certified so yeah because that I, I don't know if you saw the, the documentary seaspiracy did you see that one no okay check it out but I will. <laughs> it, yeah it maybe it may ruin some things for you but no. it was really it was the most documentaries i'm like dang it <laughs> no <laughs> you yes. can't do that anymore right yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, what i thought was fascinating was the the food industry has uh, certain labels that they can slap on like sustainably caught or wild caught salmon or sustainably caught whatever and there's really no way of approving it and this guy kind of dove into like come on, you're just slapping a label on something that's really BS. It's more of marketing than it was protection. Yeah, and so I wonder, sure. like, I, I can, <clears throat> because the, the fashion industry is probably or close to as powerful as the food industry, I just worry, like, that there are there are people who are, I mean, greenwashing is for yes. sure. Everybody knows about that. But, like, if there's any certifying bodies out there that are saying, like, there is, but you know, the, the consumer, the burden then, you know, ultimately falls to the consumer, which is a, a heavy burden when they, when they don't know things. So this is one of my things, like, just because I'm like a fair play person, yeah. <laughs> I, I have to, I have to be honest, like, this is, I see like on Instagram, these clothing brands, like, oh, you know, like, uh, even if they say like, oh, we, you know, pick up a pound of trash for every shirt, like we do trash cleanups. We created our own trash cleanup program that we, that we don't like. How does that work? Because like I can't like plan out. I'm gonna get a pound of trash and a pound of trash. Like, like what does that even mean? But sometimes you know they're very legitimate. Like, and if they are, they'll tell you. You know, they'll show you pictures. They'll say where they do it, what was collected. They'll talk about it. If they ask, then people will comment like in, on Instagram, say you know where does this, and then you know cricket stripping. There's like dead silence. If they don't talk about it, that's always like a red flag. But in terms of like the materials, you have to like um kind of learn to read between the lines and like a product description. If a, if a product like a t-shirt has like 18 colors you can choose from, probably not, not eco-friendly. And, and there are very, there are many aspects to that. Like there's, what's the dye process? You know, what do they, you know, there's like, it's so, it can get so intricate if you 
break it down, but, but the consumer at some point, like, you know, you, you have to kind of like dig into it because you can't really trust companies will stretch that. And it drives me, it just breaks my heart. Cause people are like, Oh, we're helping save the planet. It's like, Oh my gosh, you're really, <laughs> this is right. really fast fashion, you know? Yeah. So, and, and pe that people will do that is just heartbreaking for me. Um, um, and also because uh, every, the, th the thing about that is though too, and, and this is what you'll find out a lot on your journey is that in my mind, I want everything to be, you do this and then this is the right thing to do. It's like everything in life. Like there's no perfect answer. Okay. So right. like organic cotton, hundred percent over conventional cotton for sure. But there's a downside to everything, right. you know, recycled plastic is like, what do we do with all the plastic in the landfill when like China wasn't accepting it anymore. And we have, you know, we have all this plastic, you have companies, you know, making the products out of recycled plastic um, because they want to solve this problem. But then, you know, as, um, particularly <clears throat> the, the, the recycled polys and, and poly they have in any of your clothing is, you know, sheds microfibers and microfibers is a huge problem. So then, you know, you have like dryer attachments and things you can do in the washing process that can mitigate that, but that's not commonly done. And I mean, everything goes, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, you know, totally. this rabbit hole and you kind of go, well, do we try? What do we, you know, but it's all, it's that um, saying, um, you know, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Yeah. Perfect. So you do keep moving in that forward direction, keep doing the least harm keep doing, you know, moving and things will with all the innovations and everything, I believe, you know, things will fine tune because we yeah. have to now, right? We have to. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're at that tipping point where it's like, okay, we, it's no longer a luxury. It's a necessity. And, yeah. you know, I think people like you and I see that. And I'm trying to get the message out to the masses that like, it's not just the hippies anymore that want to be earth friendly. Like it's a real big deal that we need to do this uh, for generations. I don't have children myself, but like, I, I want my nieces and nephews to like, live in a world where there's a live ocean like that you know yeah. that's not just dead and, and, yeah. that's just, it's, and it's not that far off if we keep the pace that we're going and so yeah uh, those sort so of things are important so yeah someone brought up to me yesterday actually for the very first time that concept of the microfibers in the clothing that are washing off into the ocean can you talk to me a little bit that's the first time i've heard about that what, what is oh. the story behind that it's just a, it's just a, you know, when you, anytime you wash any kind of clothing, you know, I mean, it, it, that it sheds like these just tiny, tiny particles and, you know, and then, and then when they just get flushed out, they're, they're like less than five millimeters, like is considered, I think a micro um, fiber or micro particle. So, I mean, but yeah, they get washed into um, the waterways and the ocean's like full of it. And, and then, you know, the, the fish consume them and then people consume fish and, you know, I mean, the, so that, so it's kind of everywhere and, and um, it gets into the, like, um, you know, the, the water cycle, it, it's, it's crazy. And it's, you know, really alarming. And, and that was a thing that was kind of like, I, cause I, I love organic cotton is pretty, uh, uh, aside, you know, the, the, some of the issues on growing it sometimes, which are really getting much better. Uh, you know, that's kind of the great, it's a great, um, fabric because it does, it biodegrades on its own. Right. in a fairly short amount of time, um, like, roughly you know less than a year i think organic cotton will start to in a clothing article like in water or something like that will degrade um start to degrade in less than a year like a uh, um recycled plastic is like i think it's like 70 percent of the organic cotton and like um don't quote me on these numbers but like yeah no four four percent for the um for like recycled poly like you know so you think so organic cotton seems like that's like a great you know thing and then the recycled but the recycled um, plastic is like such a great use of that you can create products out of you know these like bottles and and everything um so it's kind of I but then I when I was finding out more about the microplastic I was like dang you know I right. that one is so so hard to like what do you do do you not do that like so so I, I feel like there's got to be more um things done like on a um really top level like with um biz, big companies um you know saying that you know all dryers have to be you know fitted or retrofitted with this particular thing so our washing machines and stuff so when they wash that you know th there are things like um these balls you can put in your washing machine things that can capture a certain percentage like this whole thing i'm like why aren't people talking about this more this is a really big problem on the consumer level is that something that can be in a household that people can do so i hate to kind of like um I don't like to say, you know, every, every one thing is completely bad because it's not, there's good, the good aspects to it, but then there are problems that come up that we have to solve. So, so but the microplastics one is like, that's tough. And when we do beach cleanups, um, some of these are even, they're bigger than microplastics even, but 
when people do beach cleanups, they typically go for the big items, the glory items, you know, because it's yeah, kind of yeah, satisfying. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like, but like we've sat there and just like pick through the sand sometimes in areas that are like just with these tiny, it's like, you know, it's really overwhelming, but it's, um, it, so it's something that, yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's an issue. It weighs heavily. Um, and I think there's this, you know, innovations hopefully will find ways to kind of deal with this because it's a problem, you know? Yeah. And, and that's kind of one of the questions I was going to ask is what can some, what can people do themselves in a, on a daily basis or weekly basis as an individual consumer? What can they do to help um, support the, the sustainable eco fashion world and not put all the faith in big business to do it for them? Because we know that that typically doesn't happen, even though there are some good ones out there now that are taking the initiative. Um, what can the consumer do besides that, with the dollar? Like we know that the dollar votes really heavily. Um, sure. What what can people do? Like you described the ball thing and that collects fibers. Uh, and what are some other things that people can do? Yeah, I mean, it's that is hard because, you know, um, it's been said that no matter you know what you do like as just like an individual they're not going to be able to solve the problem like like what your choices you make is that like in a solve so i i just feel like you know like i said ev everything you do that goes in a positive direction does make a difference but the the real onus is on the big corporations the big businesses who have the power who are doing the 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 production that to make that you know it's, this is obviously what's kind of driving what's happening right now to politically but that what will always be from the beginning of time is you know like it's like greed over you know what yeah. what's what's the what's best for people the planet whatever like greed is like a, like a, a horrible um driving force that's kind of so so getting the companies some but they're finding I think now, especially with green energy and stuff like that, people at first are like all resistant, but the fact is, wait, wait, why don't you look at that as being a leader in that? You can you can actually be a leader. You can create jobs in this whole new industry that will actually you know help in the long run. Like, why wouldn't you want to be a superhero in that? Why do you want to keep doing, you know? So, but hopefully, you know, the as things go in, and I'm, I'm hearing more and more things like this, uh, you know, companies are having these moments of reckoning because people are getting smarter. People are making demands. So what you're saying, so I would say like, but still for me, like personally, like, how do I do this? I, you know, just use cleaning products and everything you use in your home, make sure their green cleaning products are very available now. They didn't used to be, um, but now it's really easy to find things that are, you know, less harmful. That's super important to do. Um, just personally me, I'm vegan. Um, uh, and uh, food choices, you know, and the meatless Monday things and things like that, you know, like easing off on um, meat consumption and everything um, has a huge effect uh, on the environment. Um, and in turn, and then also, you know, if you get this little spark or fire in you, like I really want to do something, number one, feel like anybody can, you can, but yeah. then Google it, right? Like that's what we started out and we just start, start Googling things. How can I? you know, micro, microplastics, like what can I do in my home? Like, what are these products? You know, you or just start searching for them because they are more available now. And, and just, um, those are types of things, you know, um, just in your own life that you can do and then be a voice, yeah. like, like to be a voice, be, you know, support, you know, programs and companies and, um, you know, activism and things like that. Like that is where, when companies won't change, the people do have the power to change. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like all the combinations. And then at the same time, be gentle with yourself, be gentle with your not knowing, be yeah. gentle with your process, you know, and don't think that it doesn't matter. I say again, because it does matter. You do matter. Yeah. Your choices do matter. You can impact, you know, I have, um, <clears throat> being vegan, um, not just, I just have a, especially after everything been through that, I just have a real problem with suffering in any level. And I, sure. I have to like, for me, it's like this. So I, but I, I know my, I've been vegan for a while. So when I first made it, it wasn't like a popular thing. And I, I've never, that's something you never, you know, bang people over the head with that. That's food is a very personal choice for people. That's very hard. Just in a cultural thing. It's hard for everybody. So, but I found like, you know, if people asked or if there's something that just, when it came up, um, um, people I, I realized like over the years like someone had said to me um actually oh that was really really inspired me that into now, now I'm doing like this people who actually kind of I thought no way I would ever you know change or consider that as an option or just kind of dabble in it just you know 
like that's actually that I was having an influence, not by beating people over the head, but, but just by, you know, gently living my life and because it was important to me. So everybody can, <clears throat> you know, make a difference and, and have an influence um, no matter what it is. So, yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And then be kind to the ones that don't know, right? That's what we're Yes, be kind to the ones about. that don't know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and just help people along, I think, and little yes. steps. And uh, no, that's that's excellent. So your daughter is the co-founder of your company. Is this correct? <laughs> is it, so, Yeah. So how how is it working with a with a family member in trying to create and 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 run a successful company? It's fantastic. I mean, there's no, my, my kids and I, because of everything we went through, like we're super close. Yeah. Like we just, we were an Island in this world of darkness and chaos and nobody understood what we were going to do except for us and everybody. And no, it was so dark and traumatic and people had no idea what happened in that, especially where we were living at the time, some areas are more corrupt than others, but the, the darkness around kids being pawns or used for money, you know, in systems, um, like there's a lot of things. So people kind of, they tend to kind of go away. Um, it's not, not because they don't care, but it's, it's emotionally hard to handle and it, yeah. it, makes, it, ch- it changes your worldview. And it's hard for people to do that. You don't want to know that those things happen. So my kids and I were very much, you know, close together the whole thing. And, um, uh, and so roughly, we've always been really close. Roughly and, how old were they when? Well, so gosh, so when we, so at the time of the divorce, my daughter was only like one or two and my boys were like seven and 10, so seven and 10 about, okay. or no, no, about six and eight. So okay. About, yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. I didn't say that. Yeah. Five. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to remember. Right? Those yeah, ages, no, I'm just yeah. going to but if I think about their ages then yeah. So yeah. there was, um, um, my boys are three years apart and my daughter just okay. like four years after. So, so, but they were, they were little and, but, um, so the whole process, but when we, when I was homeschooling them, because they couldn't, there's no way they could do public school. They couldn't have, you know, they had to have a nice, a, a safe, loving environment to grow. And we got to explore and we had to like learn and do all these things and go on little adventures and these day trips. And then we'd, when we go camping, we'd, we like, my one son was really into mushrooms and he's a little, as the ranger, you know, <laughs> rain, little, you know, this little kid, like, I'm really interested. and the ranger said, here's a book and he loved that book and he did a whole you know um presentation on it and my son and he made this board about it and everything um and so we kind of went on these journeys together so it really drew us really close together and by the time we started the business um um my son my oldest son has a degree in environmental um, studies excellent and then my other son has a, a degree in photojournalism okay and so and business and um, so combine their expertise and how they could help. And then my daughter being a kind of a creative and super hardworking, um, she's like me very much, um, you know, empathetic yeah. in nature. And all. So just all three of us together, kind of, it was a nice foundation to start. And then my boys, you know, had their doing their own careers also. So my daughter and I just kind of took it from there. And so we're just like, uh, I, I mean, I have, a, I've had a weird life that way, but my, my kids and I, just get along. They're my favorite people in the whole world. They inspire me every day. And I love work with my daughter. I just, I couldn't imagine doing it with anyone else. That's so, so. incredible. I mean, long yeah, answer, that's, long that's, answer. Yeah, no, that's perfect. That's, I mean, <laughs> these, these are all meant to be long answers from the heart. That's really beautiful. Um, where do you see your company going in the next five years and then in the next 10 years? Um, so hopefully, I mean, things are challenging right now. I won't lie because also there, there are, even in my sm- small little supply chain, you know, there are still, there are issues. Even COVID's caused a lot of problems that way. We also had, we were doing a lot of events and things, which were kind of nice because then we, because we're an online business, but we did events that gave us a chance to do outreach and education and things like that. And we did a lot of sales that way. And, you know, that all ended as well. So, um, so, um, but the thing is, you know, what kind of made me, I kind of realized I have to fight for it a little bit more now. And I, 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 this is just part of, it's my business, but it's part of my soul. And, and especially doing the cleanups and the things we do, like, um, you know, um, it, so it's part of my identity, I feel like now. And I, so I would like to see, I guess, I like to integrate the educational component in more. I like to be, um, you know, just ma- like, m- making the information accessible to people, you know, about even about cleaning up and doing things like that. Um, what's kind of funny is like when we do cleanups, um, like we're just like that, those weird people like on the beach or we do it by kayak as well. We're kind of pounding out there and people are like, they see us and they kind of, the, 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 the thought was, 
people can like, oh, you can do, you can do it. Like a person can just go totally. pick up trash. Like, no, it doesn't, doesn't sound weird. That sounds weird. Right. But it's like, you feel like you need permission to do it unless you're on private property, but you don't, you can just go pick up trash. Like you, and they're kind of like, I'm going to go do that. Like, yeah. yeah, you can do it. You know, you can yeah. do it. Like, it's a weird thing. Like there's so much we feel like we can't do or we haven't been trained to do. Um, so I want to do more, like hopefully um, kind of inspiring around that. Um, you know, uh, um, just, I'd like to just in my, this is not a measurable thing per se, but just, I, I would just keep promoting that connection with nature because it's all we have. It's everything right now. That's what's our survival you know, um, from the tiniest little plankton to, you know, yeah. um, elephants in Africa, like everything is connected. Like that saying you pull one thread and everything is affected. Like it's so true. And just kind of, I want to just keep educating, make people feel connected, create, um, happiness and connection and kindness and positivity with each other, you know, um, promote a, like a loving environment and, um, hopefully just through maybe educational programs and things, I would love to grow in that way. Partnerships. Yeah. We've done partnerships with, um, local conservation nonprofits. Um, I love doing that and, you know, do more of that and just kind of make that community grow and connect yeah. And yeah. that's, that's going to be the key to your success. And I mean, it's, it's, it's in the name of service, right? you you don't yes. care about like having a billion dollar company that is pulling in profits for the shareholders and everyone's making money and driving Lamborghinis. You're, no. you're, <laughs> you're thinking about like how many people and how much, how can I be in service more yes. instead of me, me, me. It's about, you know, it's the next, who can I help? And that's beautiful. Yes. And I, it'll be the key to your success too. And it's authentic and it's genuine and that will resonate with people. So. Aww. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That, that's the thing is authenticity is the thing. And as a survivor, like, yeah. uh, do you, do you feel more like authenticity is like <sighs> a, totally. A, yeah. It's all about authenticity, right? It's, it's a weird thing, but um, I think that's a common trait um, with survivors. And so you can't do anything less, right? Like you just have to, yeah. Yeah. Like, and it, yeah, I wasn't always that way because I was like, I grew up as this like kind of jock, like I need, and, and you know, the coaches put pounded into your head, like be a man, toughen up, you know, like, yeah. you know, do this. And they put like this heavenly mask of masculinity over you. And like, and then when you, when I went through the trauma that I did of being attacked and like, it, it brought me down to like nothing. And then starting yeah. over to, to build that back up, you like, it almost was like a, I say this before it was almost like a blessing because it taught me like who I was as a person and like mm -hmm. and um yeah I, I just I don't know I, I really want to like give get, give I back to more you know it's it's strange it's it's a hard it's a tough to describe but yeah you're right survivor no, I, I I know what you're saying because because you don't want to say like I mean and it's not like I, I don't believe that, you know, we're like punished in life to learn lessons. I believe that that less that hard situations can be redeemed. You know what I mean? But I, but it, that's the thing, like, like, because I would never I see my kids suffer like that to have me suffer like that, I, I would never want to go through that again. I would never want you to go through it again. You wouldn't ever yeah. want to go through that again. But, but, but the things you, the way, the, who you are now and who I am now, you know, afterwards, I, I feel like it's kind of like a, being like a, a good steward of your pain. Wait, I don't know how to say that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it take, like how can you, it, it, it can change you in, in like, um, I, I like the person that I am. Yeah. In spite I, of, in spite I, of everything yeah, that I, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. I can see that about you. I can say that for all my like trauma and, and insecurities and all the things that I have to deal with all the time. Like I, I like this broken, messy person. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. And I think like, um, <clears throat> one of the things that it really taught me was, well, I, th I think one of the most powerful things was it shored up my relationships with people that I already cared about. Like it, like mm. my, my mom and dad and I are closer than we've ever been. Oh. Um, and, and family and, the, and my inner circle of people who, who love me, like I can tell them that I love them now. And I can tell them the things that are bothering me. Like when I opened up to them about being attacked and like the things like, I told now it's an open book. Like they know exactly what they're getting from me. Like yeah. that I, I don't have to pretend when I'm not happy. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to pretend yeah. like, or, or if I'm not, I can talk to them about it and yeah. it's okay. Like to have a conversation. And it, it, I mean, it just that those relationships that I had with those people um, are, are so strong uh, because so cool. of the fact that I like can be honest. I'm not yeah, hiding. What a, re what a relief. What a, isn't that like how life should be though? Right. You know, like, isn't that, that's so beautiful. I'm so glad. I'm so glad for you for that. I'm so glad.
Yeah. Honest. I mean, and that's weird. Like the, just being honest with everyone. Yeah, just being honest. Did you have a period of time? Was there a period of time where you didn't, you know, where it happened and yeah. then you suffered in silence? Oh, totally. You, yeah, yeah. I was, I messed up my relationships. I was <clears throat> like, I was doing things that were just like counterproductive that I, I just didn't know how to deal with. And yeah. I was seeing a therapist and it's not his fault, but it wasn't a good fit. Yeah, and so like, I was, I was going to a therapist and lying to him. <laughs> yeah. I understand that. Right. Yeah. About because yeah. it's like what I wanted, it's like what I thought they would want to hear, but it wasn't doing anything for me. And so like yeah. when I switched over to th this new therapist and tried it again, um, because I realized that I still needed help and I wasn't getting it. It was like, a total game changer. And I love this guy to death. He never can retire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. yeah. Like yeah. He, he's probably a generation older than me, but I hope that I outlive him because I, he's just so, <laughs> he's just so important to me. And I, I know he knows that um, as well, but like, yeah, for sure. There was a period where I was self-destructive and not like self-harming, but like it, I wasn't doing any good for myself or my relationships yeah. or my friendships. Um, yeah. I was, just yeah, locking it all in and tying things up. And, and I, I saw like everything was continuing to suffer. Um, and then uh, once you could really break through that, it was like, holy, I can't, I can't swear in here, but you go, ah! yeah, just like, uh, I just want to like, whoa, this is what it feels like to be free, kind of, free. I mean, and, and love and to be able to be loved. loved for who you are authentic like yeah just like unconditionally loved with with no matter what because every we all have stuff that happens to us i mean people can pretend that you know or try to gloss over or sometimes you know and, and people have to do that sometimes for a period of time right i mean it's hard to absorb but everybody has their something and and just that kind of what's so you know beautiful because once you once you because life is just that it's not easy it's like it's struggle, struggle after struggle after struggle okay but there's yeah. beauty in between and once you kind of start to unlock those doors i mean I mean, you've already been doing like this amazing work, your photography and your, and your, you know, conservation work and stuff. And then you're just, you know, kind of branching and stuff. Like you have so much to give and you're, you're unlocking all these doors of potential that, you know, um, that, you know, could have stayed shut, but that's what life is. Like, you, you know, the, I always feel my biggest fear and probably I bet maybe for you too, yeah. as like, is being stuck. As being yeah. that's my biggest fear is like stopping growing not learning being stuck in a situation like his life is so big and i lost so much time i'm gonna say lost so much time i you know i just feel like i don't want to waste a minute now no like, i don't right. want to waste a minute right absolutely yeah totally i mean that's yeah. so parallel to exactly how i feel with things and and it was it was fascinating to me like the different responses i got from people telling them things like um, like some people were, would immediately cry or they would, you know, cause they didn't, you know, like my mom, you know, like that was a very no normal yeah. response for her. Cause she couldn't protect me in that moment. And, you know, all yeah. these sort of things, or, um, people would say, well, why would you do such a thing? Why would you air all your personal stuff out to the world? Um, mm. you know, and, and honestly, like I've, because of it, everybody I know knows exactly what they're getting. You know, I, I'm, I don't need to sell them on, on an image of who I am. It's just yeah. it's what I am and yeah. it's authentic. And there's something so beautiful with that. And I just get so frustrated with people who are not authentic and just try to like put on a, a face that everything's happy and cheerful and joyful and all this stuff. And it's like, you can be, but like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could also be real about things and have conversations with people that aren't easy. And then realize like, uh, you know, and, and it's so, it's interesting as well. Like my career grew in the same trajectory as my like open wow. and honesty because I was, wow. I was not afraid to have conversations with people, you know, I reach out to complete strangers about doing a podcast because now I can talk about anything. And this is crazy. the first, this is one wow. of the first ones I've kind of gotten into this that I haven't done on my own, but like um, it's beautiful to have a conversation with a, a stranger or somebody and relate to them on so many levels. And yeah, I, that's the I, beauty I of human connection. Yes, a hundred percent. And the thing, you know, sometimes like, especially, um, well, you know, in your situation and, and in my situation, like with domestic violence, because there's like, there's, you know, there's, you know, victim blame is, is a thing. And it's like, and people, um, it's not like, um, it's like always like an intentional thing. It's, it's a knee jerk reaction. That's like kind of a, like a proven like psychological thing that people do, but, uh, um, but, but it's, it, it can be 
hard because I, I lived, so I know my thing, but people were always like, why did you do this? Well, why didn't you do this? But, you know, but when you know the, the truth of it, that can be a little uncomfortable and hard sometimes, but I had to probably like you, you know, you, you just, I had to learn to like, let go of um, those who maybe didn't understand and, um, you know, uh, and, and, and know that, um, cause I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't escape my story. I couldn't escape my story. My story was why I do what I do and it's why I'm who I am. So I just need to like, you know, accept and own that and um, just kind of like, like you did. And it can, it, 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 it is a journey to get there sometimes. And it can be hard sometimes still. I, 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 I realize when people say something like, oh yeah, that's right. I, but it takes so much explaining to explain how that actually happens. Yeah. So, so yeah. you just have to let some stuff go and then just kind of just walk into the beauty of it and understand that actually, that, like I said, it's your power. That's what makes you powerful. And because totally. and you're also, you know, your compassion, even though you were, um, I can tell like a compassionate person before, like it's grown exponentially. Right. Yeah. And so when you're doing your work in photography is emotion, like you can, it can just influence everything you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you um, do any outreach in that space in the domestic violence space, or is it mostly environmental stuff? Have you made that bridge yourself because I haven't myself like I haven't been a voice for like I don't go to events for male survivors of sexual assault or or those sort of things um but what I have experienced is people reaching out to me privately oh, saying wow good. this happened to me too you know there's oh. that me too movement and and men and women people that I were I'm close with I'm not obviously going to say their names or anything but I was surprised I never knew that about them I didn't wow. know that they were attacked but they they kept yeah. that in you know they kept that into their, their own private lives. Maybe their family knew, but they didn't share it with anyone else. But because of me saying what I did on my, on my big um, podcast, that did a, a ways back. Mm -hmm. It, people were coming out of the woodwork saying, wow, you know, me too, this happened. And I was like, it was beautiful yeah. to deeper the connection with people who I thought I already knew. Wow. That, no. So that's the thing. Like, I, I think it's a really good question, honestly, because, um, you know, first you kind of feel, you feel like, um, you know, this is an issue that is an issue. No, I don't, I don't do work in that. Number one, it's like, was too triggering. Yeah. Um, number two, because, um, the, um, the, there's, um, there's like, you know, domestic violence and I didn't fit even the parameter, any of the organizations, there are great organizations that help like house and don't get me wrong. That is horribly hard work to do horribly high burnout. It, it's a very grueling work to do that kind of work. But, um, there, there's the area of like, when you, when it's, when it's, you have the domestic violence situation. And then when you have like, um, when like court systems and things are enabling and are abusing, on, are, are actually become the abuser after you leave your marriage or whatever, when you have a whole nother, then those, those organizations, um, there was no place for me. Like I yeah. couldn't, cause some of them there's, there's political connections and there's things where they have to be careful and whatever. I was like in a wasteland. And so I feel like for me, like there's organizations we're going to stop domestic violence. Well, okay. Uh, really how you get that's like a societal you know psychological familial like that is a deep that is like what how like so I I appreciate you know the trying but I couldn't find my place there I, I yeah. would say I, I couldn't even within that group I didn't fit in yeah. and, and and so that was really that was really hard because you know as a survivor you want to find you know uh, you feel you're not alone and like where can I have help and who would understand me but and there is a group of people that like there's um that it went through the way that I went through it, there is a thing about that. And if you're in this world, you, you understand who those people are and they find each other. But I didn't know, I couldn't find anybody. So I, I've always felt kind of a little isolated from that. That doesn't mean that people should absolutely reach out to organizations. They should absolutely do those things. But for me personally, I yeah. couldn't find my footing. So what you did, it's in your situation, like saying that having the people come to you, that is like, that is a, a ministry in a sense. What's a better word for that, right? Like a way where you, you're saying your truth that then people allows people to say their truth so yeah and my um customers even have said to me i've had the same thing happens like i that i can't believe i mean there's a me too movement and that stuff sure. came out more so you yeah. kind of know but how many people i'm like oh my gosh like you know sister there are so many people out there that were um have been through you know domestic violence and things like that that were that it was like i i was stunned like kind of like you were and it was like yeah. um that i felt like even just sitting with each other or just being able to have people say that and know that you're safe with me and they could tell you. I mean, I feel like that is, um, you know, a work in a sense, right? Yeah, totally. Like like I, I don't feel like, I don't feel obligated to go and like lead some group with men who've been abused or whatever, but, yeah. and, and I don't think you have to, I think 
uh, I just found that it was incredibly rewarding to just speak my truth and have other people speak their truth to me. And that was enough. And I mean, it's out there forever now. It's on yeah. the internet. People can watch my story forever. And, you know, we will, and I don't know what other platforms you've talked about yours, but like, you know, you've told me you're comfortable with it on this platform. So your story will be out there and you may have people reach out to you. And I think we're both at the point now where we're, we're at the point where we can talk about these things and, and not lose our minds or yeah, like yeah, break 100%. down or like, right. And yes. so like that alone shows a lot of strength to, um, people who've been through something similar or even just, even if it's just trauma in general. So I, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I think that that's, um, a really kind of organic way to like help heal each other and support each other. And um, it's scary sometimes and vulnerable feeling and everything like that. But, but, you know, doggone it. Like I said, yeah. life is this, life is just this. So like, just be good to each other. We all, we all suffer. So we just like, you know, just be good to each other and support each other and, and love each other. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> are, are there, um, so speaking of like looking up to, to people and things like this is a hard to pivot off of, but like, are there people in your industry or companies in your industry that you idolize or look up to that are like, you know what, like you're doing the right thing. Like you, they don't have to be a Patagonia or someone like, is there anyone out there that you're like, wow, I really admire what you're doing. And are there any companies or, or individuals that you're like, that you idolize? And um, well, there, there, there are, I mean, um, like that's like, yeah, on both ends of things, like, you know, you, you did mention Patagonia. So I will say, I will say in terms of like the big companies like Patagonia, I do, I tip my hat to Patagonia. Yeah, so do because, I. I think what they're right? doing right now. Because, is, because yeah. they, I mean, they've covered, they've had to really, when you're that big and everything you're doing, you have to examine everything. Like, are you going to really look at it and dive into it and be serious about, you know, um, it's going to cost you a lot, you know, to, to make the pivot and, and everything. So are you going to do it? Or are you going to do it halfway? Like you say, you know, I, when the big companies are like, oh, I, 3% of our, this is 3% recycled materials. Like that's not enough, you know, like don't, right. uh, so are you going to do, so Patagonia, you know, they do conservation. They, they, you know, will teach you how to repair their clothing. They will, they just want to keep the life cycle of the clothing going, which is like, you know, most companies, they want it to eventually wear out so that you buy more, right? Like they're doing the things they, they also, in terms of just like, they're giving their employees, you know, from Christmas to new year's off. Um, so that even that's the an important part of um, you know the company. How do they treat their workers? You know, it's like people over profits and all those kind of things. So Patagonia's, um, um, I feel like I I feel like they're they are um, you know troubled by the issues that their kind of business can create, and they're doing everything they can to kind. Of, so as a large company, I feel like they're you know that's um, admirable what they're doing. It can be a, mo a model, right? Sure. And then in in terms of you know, there's a lot of um, uh, they're an kind of like lost for like names right now but there are a lot of earth-friendly clothing companies that are very passionate about being you know doing it the right way and doing you know and um so there are a lot of good people um so there are smaller smaller companies you can kind of you know yeah google those two and, and uh, see, yeah it was fascinating just by googling sustainable fashion who popped yeah. up and like there's more and more <laughs> little ones and just read yeah. their stories read their stories and find out you know that that's I always whenever I go to a website I immediately go to the about page first that's what I always do yeah. because I I like people's stories and I want to know what what how did they get here and what's their what's their deal why are they doing this so um but there's a lot of people who really care a lot and um and they're making um you know um, good strides and they have good products and and like you said the 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 downfall of that a little bit is just that you know yeah eco friendly fashion it does cost more. It, it does, it does cost a little bit more, but people, you know, but you know, the longevity that the way it feels on your body, you know, how healthy it is for you for knowing that the workers are, you know, taking care of that the planet is, you, you, we have to get to that point where we buy less and we buy more thoughtfully, you know, just, um, um, you know, when it's possible, it's not possible all the time. I try to make my, keep my prices reasonable because, as I can and squeak by. Yeah, because you have I, margins, I want it to right? be accessible. Yeah, you gotta yeah. like make ends meet as well. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's a hard go. Like, but I just I want it to be accessible. Um, and it and um the products once you once you have it and you wear it and you see it and you touch it and you feel like oh it's this really different. It's worth it. So hopefully, you know, my my thought was hopefully, you know, over time when it, it becomes the that becomes the the you know, the fabric, the fabrics of choice and, you know, the me methods of um, manufacture of choice, everything, you know, that prices will, you know, go down, but um, it's still very much, 
you know, conventional cotton, for example, is like, you know, it's, it's cheap. cheap. Like people, companies like, you know, people, even, you know, small business, like you can, I can tell the ones are like, I'm not going to make it if I do that, you know, but so whether I succeed or fail, I have to do it knowing that I did it the way that I thought was the right way. Um, you know, but there are a lot of companies out there. I would encourage people to look, you know, um, and um, read their stories, find out where they're passionate. There's just some amazing people out there and um, they deserve your support. Yeah. 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 Well, where can people find you? Um, so we are, um, our website is um, barefooteco.com. And, um, and uh, we, so also we're on Facebook and on Instagram and Twitter. And, and all and the same handles. Things. Um yeah, I'm trying to think uh, uh, at uh, um I'll put them yeah, in the show yes. notes if you don't remember them yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, just it's all about pretty much it's all it's like yeah. show I remember. Yeah, it's, no. all, it's pretty much barefoot ego outfitters. Yeah. Um yeah. Uh, I think Twitter is um BF outfitter, B B F ego outfitters, but um okay. but um but yeah, um Yep, I want that, people to make sure they go to your, your website and read your about section. It is great. <laughs> like, that's where they should go first because we, we, you know, your business is, is also your, your life story and you have a great story and loving family that you, that you run the business with, which is, I think even more incredible mm -hmm. and, and then go check out the products. What, what are some of the products that you are most passionate about things that you're like, oh. I if I have like two or three things that I want people to, to see or wear that I'm most proud of, what, what are they? Oh are yeah. That's, I think um, the ones that, are, that I really love and we're kind of getting sold out right now. Um, but, uh, but I go, go check this suit. We've got for size wise is um, our joggers are like, like kittens on a cloud. Like they oh. are so, they are so <laughs> comfortable. Um, and the hoodies are great. Our thermals are heavyweight thermals because it's kind of that season right now. Mm -hmm. Um, they're like amazing. Like those are some of our, our best sellers. Um, uh, our, our, our t-shirts are also, I mean, they're just incredibly soft and comfortable, but I, I for the, you know, um, um, we have, leggings too that are, we've actually sold out of those now but um but like yeah the joggers and the, and the hoodies are um and the thermals are um especially seasonally right now but there's those are um probably some of the top sellers um but yeah and yeah even the beanies are really soft yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, I the theme like, here is everything is super no, soft and you will never want to take it off yes yes and... that is 100 <laughs> like that's that's like a driving force for me it's like it has to feel good when you wear it like that's the thing we hear over and over and over again it's just like you know i just live in the i love you know so um so everything is really soft and comfortable and um that's kind of the goal and hopefully when you see it and you put it on will you feel happy yes <laughs> that's the thing you feel you feel good <laughs> well unfortunately it's probably too late for people to buy christmas yes. gifts right yes, now it from, is. <laughs> from barefoot eco outfitters however there's a lot of great things that are coming up down the pipeline of the year birthdays uh who knows whatever's coming up so make sure everyone go check them out. I know Tracy would be glad to have your business and is not only going for a good cause, but towards a good, good family and a good, uh, in a, and it's good product. I mean, we want to wear things that you're, you're comfortable in that, you know, are made of good materials. Uh, so go check her out. Uh, Tracy, thank you so much for coming on the show and opening up with us about your, your own life journey, the, the things that you and your family have been through, how it's led you into creating this brand that is in service of the planet. And um, I am so proud of you. <laughs> and I'm anxious to check out your product myself. You know, you'll, you've made at least one customer right here. <laughs> I have to see this this cloud of kitten or whatever you described it as. <laughs> kittens on a cloud. <laughs> kittens on a cloud. I, I, I love kittens. And so the, <laughs> why not? Yeah, try that. It sounds it's a brilliant description. I, I hope you use that in your product description <laughs> somewhere. Because if not, coin that as brilliant. Okay. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to join me. And I I really appreciate it. Is there anything else that that we didn't cover that you want to, to throw out to the audience about your product, about your life? Or I, I don't think so. I mean, I think we had, you know, I mean, um, if people have questions, I'm obviously always like, I, I love hearing from people and, and giving information and things like that. But I, for me, like, I just know, I, I just really enjoyed this time to get and sit and talk with you. I've admired your photography for a long time. I'm so glad we got connected on Instagram. And then as I got to know more about you, your story, and the, just the person you are, just being able to, you know, connect with like this other 
um, conservation minded person who's, you know, so passionate and, you know, has a beautiful heart. And um, I'm just excited to see everything that you're going to be doing even from from here on and um, with all your life experiences and everything to take that into your uh, everything else you're gonna be doing. So I, I just really thank you for honoring me with this uh, moment. And um, I, I really had a good time. Yeah, it's, thanks. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, thanks. So did I. Well, I will definitely be out in your neck of the woods at some point and we will have to do a hike. I wanna see some of the places that you, you're describing. It sounds incredible. And you can count me in as one other person who will be the weirdo cleaning up stuff on the beach with you. Uh, <laughs> Because I, I, I do <laughs> that here. Deal. I do that here. And you, on my block, it was like the very first thing I did when I moved in was I like saw the trash and it drove me nuts. And so I made oh. a point to to go out, especially in the, the summer months when it's easier to do and clean up the trash at least once a month and just oh, wow. completely pick my, my street up like it's something my father instilled in me. He he was adopt a highway back. Oh, he was. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So like, so I I see that. And and you're right. When I walk around the neighborhood with like two massive bags of trash, and it's, I've only covered like two blocks, I'm like, I get oh the gosh, looks from right. people that are like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. Uh, they they don't know whether to say like whether if I look like I'm a homeless person or to say thank you. Like, yeah, know, I'm obviously right? dressed like I <laughs> don't live on the street, but I'm carrying all this trash, and they they. They want to say thank you. It's it's a weird thing, right? Like, yeah, it, it, it is a weird, weird thing. thing. Yeah. But it's good. It's good. Like, yeah, it's, it made, I know it made a difference for someone somewhere. They go, that exactly. guy, that yeah, guy. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you for doing that as well. The planet, yeah. I know, definitely thanks you for all that you're doing. And I and my audience, thank you for your time. So really My pleasure. It. Thanks so yeah. much, Derek. Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much for sitting through and listening to my conversation with Tracy of Barefoot Eco Outfitters the amazing story that she is and will continue to be. I'm just so proud of her, uh, the, the journey she's had to endure with her family and to turn it into such a positive light for this world. Uh, not just the product that she's created at, with this incredible eco clothing, but like the little things like the, the beach cleanup and be, you know, and just involved in con conservation in general is, is huge. And I'm, I'm excited to see where she goes and how she grows. I, I love her brand and I hope you guys do too. Check it out, Barefoot Eco Outfitters. I will put everything in the notes on the show here um, on YouTube. Please share this across everything. Like it, comment, do all the things that, that can draw attention to her message and um, for the art of actual change to get us out there to spread the word, to spread the love for the planet. Let's get this going, guys. So you know what time it is. Go out there and make an actual change in your world or the world around you.